Uh, this is right here, totally indicative of what you get at Billy Aid Thrift. I mean, over here I can get a handful of bridal gowns and then just stroll right over here and pick up my anti-flag punk rock tank top all in the same turn. <laughs> Hey, my name is James Bradford. I'm a singer, actor, and comedian in Philadelphia, and I'm a Google local guy. So right now we're going straight into the neighborhood, which is a part of Philly that has been officially recognized by the city government as the actual neighborhood. Uh, in fact, they've painted the crosswalks here with rainbows. There are little rainbow tags underneath all of the street signs. And it's really got a rich history for the community. There's not only uh, amazing establishments owned by local LGBTQIA business owners and places where locals can go to feel safe and have a sense of community, but there's also so much community action going on, whether it's with William Way Center or the Mazzoni Center. It's just a place where people can go to gather and feel safe and uh, have a good time. And we're here at Giovanni's Room in the neighborhood of Philadelphia. It's the nation's oldest LGBTQIA bookstore, and we're gonna head in and check it out. So what's really cool about Giovanni's Room is that in an era when you don't necessarily have to go out to stores to get things like books and DVDs, this is kind of a central place in the neighborhood where the queer community can convene and get exactly what it is that they're looking for. Uh, they have local authors come through, they have signings from LGBTQIA artists. We have bands from 1984 that are long forgotten, but we can come here and see that they issued a record on fresh fruit from San Francisco. We're here and we're thriving, but a lot of our brothers and sisters didn't. And they live in these like walls forever. All right, Miss Jules, that's a lot of hairspray. <laughs> We're about to check out Philly AIDS Thrift, which is an amazing thrift store that's been around for over a decade. Philly AIDS Thrift has everything you could possibly want. I mean, housewares, clothing, a vintage section, the local dry queens all drop off their old gowns, furniture, and the best part is, is that all the money that they raise goes to local AIDS and HIV-related charities. Now, I love going in there because I'm a kind of a shopaholic, so let's go in and see if I can find another piece. Is this my size? <laughs> this is actually my size, too. So as I was saying... So I'm here with Chris Bartlett, Executive Director of the William Way Community Center in Philadelphia. Hi. Hey, it's great to see you. Welcome. It's, thank you. And you know what else? He's also a Google local guide. I am. William Way Community Center is this amazing spot here in Philly where the queer community can get together. And honestly, is there anything that you all don't do? <laughs> oh, it's true. We are. We're open 365 days a year, and we're very busy, just about every single one of them. You know, addressing all the things that you need to address as a queer youth, adult, or elder. You just opened up a residential space for uh, aging LGBTQIA individuals, isn't that right? Yeah, we have the Anderson Apartments, which are just around the corner. These are the men and women who created gay liberation. Damn right. And so we owe, the least we owe them is good housing. We do all the social services here, uh, which include social programs and this beautiful garden, which I'm about to show you. Awesome, so, I can't wait. Lead the way. Let's go in. This is an incredible portrait because these are some of the first demonstrations, gay demonstrations, in the history of the United States outside of Independence Hall. July 1965, men and women dressed up in these conservative clothes because they wanted to be the message about the signs. And they marched with these signs at a time that it was very dangerous to do so. And the exciting thing about this photo is that this man, John James, lives in the apartments now. So this is wow. him in 1965, and 50 years later, he lives here. There's such a rich history here in Philadelphia, and in a way it really is at the forefront for LGBTQIA rights. I think it is. We've had a very friendly uh, city government, both in city council and mayors, 
who've really pushed LGBT civil rights and health. So many people come to Philadelphia uh, either for the health services at Mazzoni or for the youth services at the Attic or for the community services at William Way. And this is what I imagine LGBT community and culture looking like. That we have such a proud tradition, such a proud history, uh, such a proud way of working together, that that should be passed on to the next generation. And that's done through storytelling and working together between youth, adults, and elders. So I imagine 20, 30 years from now, an LGBT community that's even more vibrant. And we've always had the flexibility to say to our younger generation, we want to hear your vision for the community and make it into reality. So you know, that's what I want to build.